of the Athena Studies Tutor for Taxation and I'm back to you guys with a third knowledge clip that's going to be describing and going over the theoretical framework. So the second part of your writing assignment. Um, so let's begin. Firstly, a recommended word range for your theoretical framework would be about 700 to 900 words, but um, I found that usually it's on the um, higher end of the this word count, so around 900 words. Um, for me personally, I think I wrote like 950 to 1,000, but it really just depends on how much um, room you're saving or you want to save for your analysis and your conclusion. You can always go back and, you know, add um, or take away. So that's just a little note on word count. But firstly, I'm going to give you guys an assignment recap again, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. So again, for your taxation assignment, you had to choose between assignment one, two, or three. First one is talking about the public availability of um, corporate tax payments. Second one is talking about what is the best solution to tax digital multinational companies. And the third assignment is to um, analyze how to tax individuals that are earning money based um, on participation in the sharing economy. So again, you had to pick um, one out of these three assignments and then make a more specific research question based on um, the main assignment topic. So for your theoretical framework specifically, the goal is to just describe the relevant information and literature that would help you answer your central question in your analysis. So again, the central question is something that you had in your introduction, first of all, um, but now you're going to take a step back and look at the general information and then you will um, hone it back in for your analysis that focuses specifically on your central question. But you can include the topics and characteristics that are relevant to the specific taxation issue that you're addressing. So obviously if you're um, doing assignment three and you're focusing on the sharing economy, you don't need to talk about you know publicly avail uh, available taxes or like digital service tax if that's not what you're focusing on. So um, that's just a little note. And one last thing is that the theoretical framework is not for you to talk about your arguments for or against your central question um, or tax policy solution. It's basically to provide a background for um, how the factors have been analyzed in previous literature. So you're not talking about, um, you know, if you're doing assignment two, you're not talking about what is your best solution that you came up with to tax digital multinational companies like um, or whatever your central question is. Um, the theoretical framework is not for that. It's describing the background information, you know, about digital service tax maybe in general. And then you introduce criterion, which you're going to um, define in your theoretical framework and then use to analyze um, your central question or tax policy in your analysis. So theoretical framework comes before the analysis because you're introducing the setting before you introduce the main characters, which uh, is your analysis. So that's just a um, quick remark about that. And now let's move on to talking about the content and the structure of your theoretical framework. So um, these kind of go hand in hand. And the two main parts of your theoretical framework are basically your background and then introducing your relevant criteria um, that are going to be again used in your analysis. So I'm going to first go over the background. So the background is basically descriptive and explanatory. So you're describing the what and the why of tax policy in general. Um, you know, under the umbrella of your topic. So in your theoretical framework background section, you can describe the background information on different tax policies that have been done in the past. It really depends on your assignment number. So if you're talking about publicly um, available taxes for corporations, then background information could be, you know, what has been done in the past, what companies have disclosed their um, tax payments or, or um, which companies haven't, why, Things like that you can describe. Those are basically background information. And you can describe relevant main concepts or actions by tax organizations. So um, is there anything that has been um, specifically mentioned by like the European Commission or the OECD, like things like that you can mention in your essay. And some examples again of things to describe in your um, background section of the theoretical framework is, you know, past digital service tax actions by the European Commission or by the United States, like what, whatever your focus is on, um, maybe how the U.S. government has been taxing individuals in the sharing economy so far, if that's what you're focusing on, the 
current multinationals that do or do not disclose their tax information publicly, like I said, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's really a lot of different things that you can um, describe in more detail to provide greater insight into um, the overall background of your topic. And the second part that is in your theoretical framework is the relevant criteria. And this is obviously very important because you're going to apply these criteria into your analysis. So firstly, you need to make clear which criteria should be used to evaluate whether the tax solutions is or are you know, successful or not. So if you're asking the question, to what extent should um, corporations make their tax payments or, and, you know, um, Tax, tax information publicly available, um, then you should find criteria, criteria excuse me, um, that evaluate this specifically. Should it be used? Should it not be used? What helps us decide whether it's going to be good or not for public disclosure? So your criteria are ways to essentially measure and analyze tax policies and whether they are or could be effective. And some examples of criteria could be Maybe the difficulty or complexity of establishing multilateral or, you know, uh, cooperative tax laws. So maybe um, a criterion for whether or not it's successful is just how complicated it would be to establish a tax law. Um, maybe cost of implementation or not implementing revenue changes for corporations, companies, or, you know, the EU as an example of a group of countries. Um, how much tax evasion there is, um, how much tax evasion has would increase or decrease um, depending on whether a solution would be implemented, you know, the quality of the tax policy or tax reports. These are just a few examples. You have a lot of options that you can use really depending on which assignment you chose and then which specific um, kind of area that you're focusing on within that assignment. And a quick note about the relevant criteria is that you can think of it similar to like grading rubric categories. So um, even for this writing assignment, your tutors are going to have topics or subtopics, excuse me, that are going to basically evaluate certain aspects of your writing assignment that are going to arrive at your final grade. So for some examples would be they're going to analyze your content, going to analyze the structure of your essay, um, they're going to look at your reference list. You know, these are a bunch of components that um, individually make up a certain amount of points and then overall give you a total grade. So think of your criteria as these individual components that overall are going to give you a um, answer as to what extent, you know, your central question is valid or not or whether, you know, a tax policy would be successful or not, things like that. So these are the main concepts that you're going to use as your measures and introduce as your measures that are going to help you get to your answer in your analysis. So you introduce your relevant criteria in your theoretical framework, you define it, provide evidence for them, and then in your analysis, you're going to use these criteria that you've already um, defined and introduced in your theoretical framework and apply them specifically to your central question and helps you answer your central question. So think of it that way. And another um, note on relevant criteria is finding your relevant criteria. And a way that you can do this is look for your literature for common themes. So if you're looking at a lot of articles, um, excuse me, about specific um, concepts relating to public taxation or, you know, um, digital service taxes, and you're reading all those articles and topics that continuously keep coming up when people are analyzing whether or not they support these tax policies, um, those could be your criteria. So, for example, do academic articles consistently reference, you know, the complexity of implementing a tax solution, um, maybe how much public scrutiny a company would get if they publish their tax tax payments, um, how much does it cost to implement a tax policy, you know, when you're evaluating the success of a tax policy, do these factors come in, these factors and more factors um, that I didn't even mention, how many come into play? So a way to organize your criteria would be to make a list of literature per common criterion. So let's say that you look through maybe um, three to four articles at first and you take note of um, a few criteria that you notice that are very common across these articles. So from there, you can basically, in a Google Doc or something like that, put the criteria at the very top and then list all of the references or list all of the articles that mention that specific criterion. 
And so in that way, it helps you organize and backtrack if you need to find extra information to define that criteria, um, to define like that specific criterion. You can already have the article name where you found it um, listed underneath, and then you can go back to that article, find um, the criterion, and then use it as um, a reference whenever you're describing the criterion in your theoretical framework. So that is a way to help you organize um, your criteria. And again, you can come up with probably four to six criteria at first and then narrow it down to have maybe three to four. So um, if there's, after looking at a, uh, a few articles, you notice there's maybe like six, six common themes. And then from there, you can decide, you know, um, which of those themes you find personally interesting or you think that you could be um, able to elaborate on or they just have a lot of evidence and they're very, very commonly occurring across a lot of articles, you know, those are the ones that are going to be really good for your essay because you need to be able to explain these criteria in depth with evidence. So why those criteria when you're analyzing um, whether or not a tax policy would be successful or not. So before I finish up this video, I'm going to show you guys my taxation writing assignment um, as an example for you guys. Again, it does not have to follow this exact structure, but um, this is what I did because it worked for me personally. So um, my taxation writing assignment was over assignment two. Um, what is the best solution to you know tax digital multinational companies? And I was focusing specifically on, first of all, the EU. And second of all, I was focusing on the difference between short and long-term solutions um, that the that have been proposed essentially. So in the first probably three paragraphs of my theoretical framework, I'm just providing background. And for me, the way I found uh, my writing to flow the best was chronologically. So I talked about first the first international taxation actions were in this part um, sp relating to the digital economy. Then um, this other report you know, sustained that there's still problems, like there's still this thing with digital tax. And then I continued to 2018 and there was more information about, you know, digital tax, what they're thinking about it, what they're wanting to do, um, what the European Commission is, you know, deciding on making a tax policy. Um, there's unilateral actions happening uh, and they want to have, you know, short and long-term multilateral actions happening, you know, things like that. So I'm just basically providing like a very um, in-depth setting where I introduce basically then my criteria. So for me personally, I had four criteria for analyzing this, um, for analyzing whether a, this type of tax solution would be um, effective. So for me, I basically had, you know, um, my first criteria. So I talked about um, the complexity of a combination of, you know, these tax, tax um, solutions. My second criterion is here in this whole paragraph. It's a lot of information, but um, that was like a lot of evidence that I had for a second criteria. Um, and then my third criterion is here in this one, which is, you know, talking about administration costs. And then my last criterion um, I introduce in this part, which is talking about, um, you know, who, who applies to um, being taxed with a digital service tax. And that was um, the four main criteria that I used personally for my essay, but of course yours are not going to be the same as mine and even the writing might be different, you know, it's really up to you, but this is what I found worked for me. And it, I think it's good to have a visual example of how a complete theoretical framework would look like. So um, from there, I am going to basically conclude this video. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comment section what video you want to see next and check the description box for links to the other taxation writing assignment videos um, and slides I used for this video. Really, like all the information is down below. And please let me know if I should make videos about the analysis conclusion and then, you know, some extra writing tips or extra things um, to make sure that your writing assignment is really well polished. But that's basically going to conclude this video. Have a really great day. Bye guys.